In recent years, there have been a lot of exciting discoveries about chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, and how it develops. Our goal is to introduce you to some recent findings that have implications for improving treatment. Some of this information is highly technical and might be a bit confusing. Don't worry, this is just an introduction, and your treatment team can review the information with you so that you best understand which parts apply to you. Remember that CLL is cancer of specific white blood cells called lymphocytes. Each type of white blood cell has a specific function, and they all work together to fight illness and disease. There have been some recent discoveries about how CLL cells are different from our normal white blood cells. Now for the technical part. Many of these differences are linked to the cell's DNA, the instruction manual every cell carries that tells it what to do in the body. DNA is stored inside the cell in the form of chromosomes, which are shaped like the letter X. All our cells normally contain 23 pairs of chromosomes, and scientists have numbered them for convenience. Chromosomes are made up of long strings of instructions, which we call genes. Each gene is responsible for some function in our body. Let's summarize what we've learned. DNA is the instruction manual of our cells, organized into genes, which are stored on our chromosomes. Our bodies are constantly making new white blood cells, and very occasionally a mistake is made when the new cell's chromosomes are copied over from previous cells. Some of these mistakes are harmless, but others can turn a normal white blood cell into a CLL cell. When scientists look at the white blood cells of people with CLL, they often find very specific kinds of changes in their chromosomes. Let's take another break to review this process. During the creation of new cells, mistakes during the replication of chromosomes can result in the development of CLL. The most common changes are a loss of part of certain chromosomes. Some people with CLL have part of chromosome 13 missing, which is called 13Q deletion. People with this change tend to live longer than other people with CLL. Others have part of chromosome 11 or part of chromosome 17 missing. These changes are called 11Q deletion and 17P deletion. The P or Q depends on whether the missing part is from the short part or the long part of the chromosome. Some CLL cells have an extra chromosome 12, which is called trisomy 12. People with any of these three changes tend to need treatment sooner than other CLL patients. As you can see, Specific features of the CLL cells provide information about how CLL might progress in a person with this illness. Some chromosome changes tend to occur in people who have a faster progressing disease, while others are more commonly seen in people whose disease is progressing very slowly. A different kind of change in CLL cells affects a specific gene in chromosome number 14. This is the so-called IGHV gene, which makes one piece of our immunoglobulins, molecules that play a role in our immune system. Some people's CLL cells contain changes to this gene. If 2% of the gene or less is changed, scientists call that patient's CLL unmutated CLL. If more than 2% is changed, they call it mutated CLL. CLL cells with mutated IGHV can't multiply as well as cells with unmutated IGHV, so the disease tends to progress more slowly. As a result, people with mutated CLL don't need treatment as soon as people with unmutated CLL and tend to live longer. 
As that was a lot of information, let's quickly summarize some of the different genetic changes that can occur in people with CLL include 13q deletion, 11q deletion, 17p deletion, trisomy 12, and IGHV changes which can be mutated or unmutated. These changes vary from person to person. Talk to your healthcare team about what characteristics are relevant to you. Your doctor can advise which genetic tests would be beneficial and when to do them. Ask your doctor if this is something you want to know more about. Another exciting new discovery is that certain treatments may be more or less effective in people with different chromosomal changes. For example, if you have an 11q deletion or a 17p deletion, it might be possible to tailor your CLL treatment because it may respond better to certain treatments. So, your doctor may recommend different treatments for your CLL than for patients who don't have these changes. A lot of the information we have provided might seem overwhelming or confusing to take in all at once, and we don't expect most people to develop a clear understanding of CLL from this brief overview. Your next step will be to ask your healthcare team for clarification and whether you have any of these changes and what they might mean for your treatment and quality of life. Many people find it helpful to take some time to understand CLL so that they know what to expect and to feel more actively involved in the treatment decisions that affect them. Your healthcare team will make it a priority to maximize your understanding of CLL so that you can have confidence that you are receiving the best care possible.